What's up, world? And welcome to another edition of I Mix What I Like here at the Real News Network. I'm Jared Ball here in Baltimore. Today, for this segment, we're going to be talking with Namdi Scott of the Ujima People's Progress Party, an electoral party forming here in Maryland. Namdi, welcome to the Real News, and I Mix What I Like. Thank you, brother. So first, before we get too far, tell us again about the Ujima People's Progress Party, the first black worker-led electoral party forming here in Maryland. Yes, exactly. Uh, in the history of Maryland, there's never been a black uh, independent uh, electoral party, especially led by black workers. Uh, we think it's very important to do that because here is a state where, first of all, we have 30 percent of the population uh, is of African descent, which historically in this nation is, gives us the fifth percent, uh, rank number five in the country of, of density. The other thing is that we have a lot of elected black officials, but that doesn't translate into economic and real political uh, influence for everyday black people. Uh, and so we think that it is at this stage where people are talking about solutions that we have to start looking at it at a grassroots way and what things serve uh, working people. And history has shown that whenever black people have moved forward, the ball has moved forward for everybody when they're talking about social progress. So in terms of electoral politics, where obviously the goal is to marshal enough votes to enact what it is you're trying to enact, how does a black or race-based electoral pol political party work? In other words, why isn't this meant to be a, 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 a more multiracial, multi-ethnic workers-led movement? Well, in practice, it is, it is a mass-based, multiracial approach. Um, the fact is, and, and this is the problem that's going to be very refreshing for people, the truth is black workers said, got together and said, we're tired of not being represented. So black workers led a worker-based electoral party. It does not have goals and objectives that deny that other workers will benefit from the kind of things that we move forward. But this is the truth, and this is being honest, that we want to have a relationship that's based on something different than what politics normally does. It's, it's, not, it's not adequate to say or appropriate to say anymore that the Democratic Party is the party created by the slaveholders of America. It's just not what's said, but it is the truth. And so when you say those things, people try to get a little thrown off, but it is the truth, and we're moving forward with building an agenda that really speaks to everybody uh, as working people and poor people can unite with. So a lot of people, obviously, as I know you are familiar with, are, uh, a lot of black people in particular say, well, the Democratic Party is really our only option. It is the party most black people vote with, right. regardless of candidacy. What is your relationship then with the Democratic Party, both in terms of what you want to see happen locally, but, but building even a broader sure. effort here? So we, we, are, we are striving to be a real opposition party to the Democratic Party, wherever it's in, in power, and in places where the Republican Party has been a genuine opposition party. And that's unique because we have two major parties in this country that agree on many of the similar assumptions about white supremacy, about capitalism, and about who rules uh, the, you know, what people get the spoils of this economy. So there's no opposition in those two things. There are nuances between what they, uh, how they want to achieve those goals. Mm -hmm. We want to be able to have people say, well, if the Democratic Party is our best option, then when you look in Baltimore or you look in the state of Maryland, every boogeyman policy that comes out doesn't come from the Republican Party. Your the party that gets in your way for progress is the Democratic Party. Now, you could choose to keep voting that way, but when you get frustrated with schools getting closed, don't get frustrated at activists or grassroots organizers. Get, 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 get uh, frustrated with the Democratic Party. When there's police brutality and funds being overspent for the, for the police department, it's not the Republicans that do that. It's the Democratic Party. And people need to hear that over and over and over so that you can't run from the fact that the problem that you have is the Democratic Party stealing your vote but not giving you anything back in return. So Ujima is a black worker-led party here in Maryland. What are some of the conditions facing black workers here in this state that have led you and your constituency to form this party? What is it that, that black people are facing that the Democratic Party can't meet or, or requires this, this new, the Democratic Party can't deal with and that requires such a new move that you, such as that you're making here? Well, the, the word can't is a, is a generous word. I think the word is won't. Uh, deal with. Uh, we have, uh, throughout the black community, we have uh, no economic development. Uh, you see parts of North Avenue, east and west on both sides, that look like it's been bombed out. 
Uh, how do people get reelected to that kind of garbage that people have to live in? Uh, we have schools that get closed. We have unions being shrunk. Uh, there, there is a uh, real poverty level, uh, almost 25% in this city. These are the kind of things that are non-factors when Democrats and Republicans debate each other about how we move forward. This is not, and these are not situations that we can live with. And the truth is, in Baltimore, you can't live, right? At the rate of 334 plus people a year, we die. And, and, and those who don't die from being shot and st stabbed die from lead poisoning. Uh, they die from intellectual uh, uh, starvation that they get in school systems. So the death is happening because we're being ignored. This is what makes it possible for us to even have the conversation because I've been told directly by members of, from the, uh, from the uh, uh, registration from the um, election board that both black and white Democrats do not want to see uh, an independent black electoral party get on the ballot. Mm. So, well, well, tell us about your, your campaign that is coming up. You, you are running for? City Council, mm -hmm. 7th District in Baltimore, uh, in West Baltimore. Are you all running a mayoral candidate here? We're not, we're okay. not. Uh, we decided, we wanted to do something very uh, unique. Uh, we're working actually in partnership with several activists throughout the state. So it's a statewide campaign. And in Maryland, you have to get 10,000 signatures from registered voters to become an electoral party, and that lasts for about four years. So that's something broader than just what we are doing in Baltimore. But a, a part of that conversation is in Baltimore, we decided to dig in and build networks of organization. So the 7th District, where a lot of us live, we already started postering and organizing and you know, using spaces to meet. So when the question came at the very end, whether or not we were going to run, we said, you know what? We've already started to build a machine here, right? So let's test that machine and let's see what it can do uh, against uh, an establishment uh, candidate. Because uh, I think the one thing that they have, that we have that they don't have is real organic, uh, on the ground kind of organizing that no one's being paid to do right now. It's people really committed to ideas. And that's a very, dangerous thing to do when you have people committed to ideas. You're not running a mayoral candidate, but are you endorsing anybody for mayor? Are you in support of any particular candidate versus another? Or are you saying that whole system or that whole process is, is poisoned and, and, and we have to sort of step back well, from that? Well, it, 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 in this case, we're not going to endorse anyone. Uh, and that may change over the course of, the, of, the t of time because there's going to be about, what, 10 months before the right. election. I think it's important to treat us like you would treat another, another party. You don't ask a Democratic party, will you support this Green Party candidate or will you support this Republican candidate? No, because that's not what parties do. They represent their constituents, they represent their platform, uh, and that's what they do. So we don't want to put ourselves in a position where people look at us like we're not a political party. We are a political party. We just have not obtained the uh, ballot status, but we represent ideas, we represent economic and political interests, so we're going to move forward like that always and only endorse people who are part of our, uh, our party and who embrace our platform. So I should have started with this earlier, but for those not up on their Kiswahili, what does Ujima mean? Ujima means cooperative uh, work, uh, cooperative work and responsibility. Uh, and we chose that because the truth is, is that for so long, uh, we've looked to leadership to come out of our black middle class, our educated class and those kind of uh, ministerial class. And we've gone through several years of failure. And the truth is, it's time for the responsibility of the community be, to be called upon by working in poor people. We have to find our own solutions, our own answers, and build our own institutions. So I, this, I'm assuming, will be similar to the question I just asked about the mayoral campaign uh, here in, in Baltimore. What do you say to people who are looking at the national camp, presidential campaign right now? Well, after you, have to, after you take a bath, because you'll be sullied by all the dirt that you have to go through, uh, I think people are gonna have to make their own choices about that national question. Um, I, I think that the question of Bernie is very uh, provocative. I think he's saying that some of the things that people want to hear, finally want to hear. Uh, and for many years, people forget he wasn't a Democrat, right? He was an independent. Uh, that being said, by him running as a Democrat, he brings all the people who've been radicalized and activated right back into the comfort zone of the Democratic Party, and they're going to be frustrated. They're going to be frustrated because you can't have solutions for working and poor people in a capitalist party. It is 
<laughs> it doesn't work that way, you know? And he's kind of exposing that, which is the good part. But at the end of the day, if he doesn't win the nomination, he's going to bring everybody back in the fold. He's going to support Hillary Clinton. And that's what they do, right? And there's no answers for us. We have to have independent organization. We have to have our own capacity to say, this is what we want. So that even at some point where we're, just people say, well, you'll never win a, 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 a national election. That's not the question. If 30% of the people in this state say, we know what we want and this is our platform, and no one gets our vote unless you address this, then everyone has to address you. They treat you like a grown-up. They treat you like people who are contending for power, and that's what we're trying to teach people, that you can contend for power, but you have to be organized on your own independent terms. You may also be offering a blueprint for others in the country uh, to, to model. Oh, we hope so. Yeah. We hope so. We want to document. We hope that this gets out wide and uh, broadly as possible. We're doing the best we can to document it. We're in talks with other political parties around the country who are trying to do similar things. We have something that we think is very different. Uh, the on-the-ground process that we're building is very important. I mean, you might have heard it in the Republican parties with this whole uh, Tea Party. Mm -hmm. Build the bench. Build the bench, right? This whole concept of, you know what, you just win offices as city council. Not even city council. You win offices as uh, a school board. You win as the tax collector and all these little roles. But you build this credibility that people say, you know what, you can win. And you have one. And the truth for us is that we have to build our bench, right? And, and, and when you turn around, you're going to see independent black organization that has an agenda and can speak for itself, and it's funded by its own, its, its own constituents. That's what we're trying to move forward with. Well, I'm D. Scott, Ujima People's Progress Party. Thank you very much for joining us here at The Real News, and I mix what I like. Thank you, brother. And thank you for joining us here at The Real News, and I mix what I like. And as always, as for all involved, I'm Jared Ball in Baltimore saying, as Fred Hampton used to say, to you we say peace if you're willing to fight for it. So peace, everybody, and we'll catch you in the whirlwind. I miss what I like, what I like.